Welcome to the Awakened Goddess Show, your source for inspiration, wisdom, and personal discovery. The place to learn from a diverse mix of mentors, metaphysical experts, spiritual leaders, and best-selling authors from around the world. I'm your host, Angela Wilkinson. Join me as I explore the minds of my masterful guests while they share powerful insights and easy-to-use tools you can start using right away. Now, let's tap into the energy of the Awakened Goddess and be enlightened by today's guest. Michael Margulis, an acupuncturist, is skilled at translating symptoms in a way so that they become way showers. From his perspective, imbalance and dis-ease provide important clues that render themselves to be wonderful healing opportunities for better balance, greater growth, and freedom on all levels. A certified teacher in the School of Remembering, Michael shares the teachings of Drunvalo Melchizedek through the Awakening the Illuminated Heart Workshop as well as spiritual empowerment and sovereignty workshops in North America and in Europe. Michael feels deeply compelled to assist people by teaching them profound heart-based activations through meditation practices that awaken life-changing internal technologies of the heart and the acceleration of their personal ascension process and spiritual sovereignty. Now let's welcome Michael to the show. Hi, I'm Angela Wilkinson, and welcome to this episode of the Awakened Goddess Show, where we co-create powerful, conscious conversations on the leading edge. Today, I have Michael joining us to talk about unity heart consciousness, the nature of our holographic reality, and how we can accelerate our personal ascension process. So welcome, Michael. Thank you, Angela. Hello. Hi. (laughs) I'm really excited about this conversation today. Um... I, I have to laugh at myself because I often say you never know where we're going to go uh, during these conversations and uh, it's totally going to be uh, the, the, how this conversation is today because uh, I have a sense that the energy, I, I really follow the energy of what spirit wants to bring through. And I know you have incredible uh, heart-centered energy and um, you hold space well, and that is also my job as an interviewer. Uh, and so I'm just excited to see what we're going to explore today. So let's dive in, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> First off, I want to start. Uh, for some reason, sometimes I ask this, often I don't, but for some reason, I'm getting the intuitive hit that it might be important to this conversation today. And that's to ask you, what was the catalyst for your own personal spiritual journey? I feel like there was something that shifted for you that was pretty significant. So I'm curious what happened, what what kind of uh, got you on your path and uh, doing the work that you do today? Wow, great question. There's been many <laughs> things in my life. If I think back to the first one, I'd be, I would be—I was I was 12 years old, and um, I had two hours of missing time where I was taken upon a ship. And it's funny that you're asking me this question because I really don't tell this story. Really, I hardly ever tell this story. Beautiful. And so, so I'm still I'm still learning about what happened in those two hours. Though I was very interested that um, a few weeks later I started being interested in mind power and how to uh, how to harness uh, visualization power and the power of the unconscious mind and how to be more conscious of what is normally unconscious. So in order, in other words, to become more conscious. And so that was when I was 12. And uh, when I was 18 years old, I started practicing this martial art with a lot of uh, a lot of qigong, and the master came over and he said, "Hey, I want to raise you to be my assistant." And I said, "Okay." And from then on, I mean, I just kept meeting all these masters, and they kept saying, "Hey, let me show you everything I know." And I got to see a lot of things, which blew open my paradigm of what's possible, and so I had a lot of moments outside of linear time, and lots of moments that, you know didn't agree with anything that we learn in school and anything that my parents taught me and I knew that there was more so yes. uh, so that's the nutshell that's the nutshell and so ever since then I mean ever since then I've been really working on expanding my consciousness and opening more and the last the 
I discovered Drumblow's work many years ago, and I really started getting very, very, very serious into it uh, about four or five, about five years ago, six years ago, and it's been a tremendous blessing in my life. It's Drumblow Melchizedek, and it's really, really been about heart consciousness, mm -hmm. which um, has been a huge changer in my life. And in the lives that I that are around me, because mm -hmm, we just mm -hmm. we just are who we are, which changes everything that is. Yes, yes. Um, so if people have never heard of him before, he is the I understand the founder of the School of Remembering. Yes. Okay. And so, how did you um, first come in contact with his material? What what led you there? Well, the first time, uh, a friend of mine, I was living in Toronto back then, now I live in Montreal, and um, a friend of mine showed me the book that he wrote, and it had the flower of life on it, and I looked at it, and I said, yes, <laughs> and um, he told me about the Mer this Merkaba workshop that he had done, and maybe a few months later, I was I was walking through um, walking through downtown Toronto, and, and I get this whisper saying, turn your head so I look over and I see this book in the secondhand bookstore so like a child I run in and I go and buy it and I open it up and I, and I open it up and I look and I say yes but not now and I close it up and I took it with me for, and, I, and I moved and I took it with me this night and then at a certain point I was uh, maybe, I think it was the I think it was June of 2011 I was on the couch and I was just I must read that book so I just ran and I got the book and I devoured it and then I got the next one and and I signed up for, for, for the Awakening Illuminated Heart Workshop, which one of the things that really impressed me about it is that after, at that point, 20-some years of consciously evolving, this was this tremendous stair step in consciousness that I was like, oh, okay, so I want to share this. Mm -hmm. And then my guides had me apply for the teacher training, and I went and did it, and then life unfolded, and I just gave a couple of weeks ago, I gave the 24th workshop, uh, the Awakening Illuminated Heart workshop, which is a tremendous life changer. Yeah. Wow. Just listening to your story, how it has uh, unfolded is absolutely incredible. And I know, you know, because we are in the 3D and we're doing this show with a time, uh, you know, we have a time constraint, you know, it's, I understand putting it into a nutshell. And, uh, but just, but just uh, thinking about how you walked through and starting at 12, things were just opening up for you. And uh, what, I, you know, I would love at some point to talk more about that uh, because it's like when we're younger, some of us have this intuitive knowing. And it's like when I was, oh gosh, in middle school, I think, uh, I was playing, I'd have all my little girlfriends over, we'd have a sleepover, and uh, I'd be the ringleader and we would be doing light as a feather, stiff as a board, and I'd be practicing levitating people. <laughs> and, and to, you know, to hear your story, it helps me recognize, wow, you know, things are lined up for us. And it's us saying yes to those opportunities as they show up and uh, not necessarily knowing where they're going to lead, but just following that inner guidance of there's something here. There's something here for us. And I think that speaks to really following your heart, getting out of your head and following your heart and trusting that you are being guided. So I would love to hear, um, how do you see heart unity consciousness? How would you describe that? Well, first of all, let me say I absolutely agree with everything that you're saying. And really, it is your heart that will know, which is why all these law of attraction teachings, which are very valid, will always say, follow your joy, follow your bliss, because that is what your heart will tell you. And your heart knows this plan that is for your highest good, for your highest timelines, the contribution you can make, that which your soul will be able to experience all of these themes, and that is good for the, as for the highest good of all of creation and beyond. And that heart knows that you are not separate. 
because it is the, the unity field, that marriage of the higher and the lower. Mm -hmm. And it knows that it is literally in unity, where it's not male and female anymore, it's male-female. There's no and, it's not a separation thing. So when you are, when you are able to make that move, and in John Below's school, the school of remembering, that is the specialty to make that move from the brain, which is always polarized, right and left. Mm -hmm. Your right brain is very loving, but it's a conditional love because it's polarized with the other side. Your heart is a unity field. And making that move where your higher self lives, you know, and sitting and having, you know, a little tea and a little talk with your higher self every morning, before you start today, before you go to work, before you go do your healing practice, before you do your grocery shopping, go to the board meeting, whatever, so that you can know what is, what is on the agenda today that is going to be for my highest good and for the mm -hmm. highest good of all creation. There's no separation between what is good for me and what is good for all of creation. And coming from the heart, we will be shining out our best self you know and if you bring your consciousness from a place of polarity it will become infused and imbued with that place of unity almost as though if you have a two wicks and you dip them one into paraffin wax and one into beeswax you will have that candle and the more you do it the thicker of a candle you'll have Mm -hmm. So more and more that you bring your consciousness into your heart where love is the only agenda, more and more will you become that, your consciousness will become that, and judgment will seem odd. Right. You'll know that whether it's a bum on the street asking for a couple of bucks or even searching out for that just so perfect puddle to clean out his dentures, it's no different than somebody who's practicing Reiki all day and who's teaching Tantra or anything like that because it's all a contribution of oneness from different perspectives. Yes. Yeah, so let's explore the idea of oneness because I think that's uh, that's a challenge that a lot of us have is, is really, first off, to understand what it is, oneness, right? And then actually practice and embody it. Yeah. So <laughs> how do we move from understanding from a logical perspective into embodying it? Well, from a logical perspective, you can look at sciences, like uh, quantum science will tell us that my skin doesn't really discreetly and abruptly finish here and then the air begins and then well the next person's skin and then we know that it's like well most of me is empty to begin with but at my skin it becomes skin then air skin then air skin then air and then it becomes air 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 so that there is no discrete finishing of myself mm -hmm. from a scientific perspective and from another perspective we learn we think that I am here and this is the outside world and that person is another separate somebody. And then when I look at my driver's license, I'm going to see a different name than that person has on their driver's license. So it's easy to make that error. Right. And it looks like that person has a different situation, different genetic set, just different everything. And it looks like it's separate. And really, we're all living in this sphere of consciousness and that sphere of consciousness the entire is actually a screen and this screen which in our in, in, in John Below's school we call it the Leonardo sphere because it is actually that sphere around Vitruvian man and it is actually the diameter of your arms and legs that are outstretched and this screen is so amazing that it makes it look like there's distance it makes it look like a star that's 20 billion light years away is that far away. And it makes it look like there's multiplicity going on. Mm -hmm. And it makes it look like something is happening to you. You get something in the mail, a car is on its way to, to maybe hit you or, or to give you a chance to avoid it. 
Um, it looks like something is happening to you. Somebody offers you an apple. It looks like something is coming into you. When in reality, actually, it's our vision centers that are shining this image that's powered by our, by our infinite love light. And mm -hmm. it's shining this image onto this screen. So like and a projection that, movie. It's a projection movie. And it's so amazing that it makes it look like Time is sequentially passing. It makes it look like there's multiplicity. It makes it look like things are solid. It makes it look like the pollen is fluffier than a diamond, but it's really all actually an image. And so, that, so because we think in terms of polarity, we think in it's either this or this because we come from a brain perspective, which will always want to classify things. But everything is this, that, not even this and that. It's not male and female, it's male, female. It's not God and goddesses, it's God goddesses. It's everything. So when, so things, not only are we taking in the light, our brain makes sense of it, turns it around, goes to the vision centers and says, oh, Apple. But I'm at the exact same time, paradoxically shining out this screen, uh, this image of Apple and it shows up on my screen and then I see it. Mm -hmm. So what I think I am seeing that is outside of me is actually shining out from me. So that when every, everything that happens, and people talk about life is a mirror, and in mm -hmm. fact it is, because what it is is that there's this infinite love light, and superimposed upon this infinite love light is our beliefs about what life is which is why it's so important to remove those limiting beliefs and start seeing about everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Everything is possible. So if I get a letter from the bank saying now they want my house, I can still decide that it's great. And I can <laughs> yeah. look and I say, oh, I must have this unconscious belief, because I don't remember consciously willing for that to happen. I must have this unconscious belief that abundance is not easy for me. Or that once I get to a certain amount of abundance, I'll have to fall down because maybe I'll become egoic or whatever the exact belief system is. And most of the time they're passed on by our friends, by culture, by society, by our parents. And this will actually always be validated in our creation. And I say creation because even though we talk about law of attraction, law of attraction is still coming the, – the name – Law of attraction is coming because we think that there's duality. Something over here is coming into my life. Really, it's all emanating from me, shining on this screen, onto this screen. And so when I, I see something that I don't dig, then I can say, oh, wow, this feels terrible. Though now I know I must have this unconscious belief that is life is not easy or love is not easy or I am not worthy and it's going to play out in this context and life could choose many contexts for you and so that we can consider wow that's great I'm I'm being shown that which is in my higher self's agenda to release these limiting beliefs so that I can actually be sovereign of this context and say, okay, well, the context seems bad, but I don't have to feel bad and I don't have to think that I am bad. I can still be happy knowing that this which is not who I really am, which could only be infinite love light, is actually detoxing from me and I've got to see it first so that I can make this awareness of who I thought I was. Mm -hmm from past life beliefs that I've dragged on, from what my parents uh, taught me, from what my first girlfriend or boyfriend taught me, or the first time I had a job uh, taught me, or the first time I got a paycheck, etc. all these formative moments in our lives. And so that when something bad happens, it's actually the opportunity to say, oh, that's not me. What is it? What must I believe to be true in order to create this? And then I say, oh, let me just change that belief. Know that it's not me and choose to be happy even if the scenario doesn't make me feel happy i can still choose sovereign through it, myself as a sovereign person to be happy mm -hmm. then when i'm happy my state will actually shine out and give me a reason to be happy yeah and i think that's really important for people to sit with and and hear because you're right we are always at choice and we are 
manifesting everything around us, good and bad, good and bad, right? And, uh, and then I want to address that even though we recognize that, oh, this is my belief and I know that I'm manifesting this, it's really painful. How come it keeps manifesting? So yes, we can release the belief, but boy, they're, they're sure um, sticky. They're really, they feel, seem hard to get rid of. Right. And that's where, <laughs> that's where a lot of people get caught up with. And I got caught up with that a lot is that, yes. say, okay, I had that realization. So either I didn't really realize the belief under the belief that could make that belief true, or there's, there's that as well. Though what will happen is even when I get down to this really, really the nitty gritty of that belief, life isn't safe. Say, and then a bus comes and hits me. Validate. <laughs> Yay. So that what it is, is that when I make that conscious awareness now, oh, I've had this belief and it could not be true because I'm truly eternal and infinite and a limiting belief could only be false because I'm eternal and infinite. Mm-hmm. One thing the infinite doesn't have is limitation. Then what life will do will say, okay, creator incarnate, good job. Let me give you a situation which is similar so that now you can actually live out what you want and not what you don't want. So we'll think, oh, but, but I dealt with this. How come I'm seeing it again? <laughs> oh, you're right. actually getting a chance to kind of rewrite the hard disk in because you can do it on a mental level. You can do it on emotional level, but you need to do it on all three bodies that you're dancing with in this reality. And then so that once you say, oh, okay, this isn't what I want. And the bad feelings will come up and you can say, oh, this isn't who I am. Yay. Because I get to see who I'm not. I'm just going to welcome it all, knowing that it's not me. And all I got to do is feel it. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to do is feel it and not analyze it at all. Because when I analyze it in the middle of the process, I'm going to be judging a situation that is not complete. And I am going to come from a place of duality, mental, thinking that I am me and the rest of creation is the rest of creation and that I'm not infinitely supported in love. And maybe I might even forget that I'm not infinite love to begin with because it feels bad. Right. So, I, so this mantra that I use quite often, whether in my acupuncture clinic or whether in the workshops that I give or whether the empowerment workshops that I give is that if it doesn't feel good, it is not true and it is not you. And it is leaving you so that you can really be you. And we'll have to put capital Y on that last you. Yes. And uh, so that we really have to start reprogramming ourselves, reprogramming ourselves. And myself, what I did is I give myself like homework, like for a month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself like, like a topic, like what if nothing has to do with me? And then maybe the next month is, what if the entire creation is emanating from me? Which seems completely paradoxical, and it is, Mm -hmm. because both are true. And once you start stepping into into unity consciousness, you will see paradox everywhere. And more that you see paradox and engage with it, more that you know you're in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's just that your brain can't make sense, because it's going to have to say either black or white. Right. So it's like you, um, once you start seeing the paradox is showing up more. It's like your brain gets confused and then you're able to really see it as the illusion that it is. Yeah, you're able to definitely see more and you'll have little moments. Once you start getting really, really serious about it, you'll have little moments where higher self will give you what'll seem like an internal glimpse of something that is completely outside of time, maybe like a samadhi experience in meditation, I've had it when I was driving. I was at a red light, thank goodness. But <laughs> you might not even know, be able to discern whether it's in fast forward, whether it's in freeze frame, or whether it's in slow motion, because you're stepping out of that linearity of time. Because in reality, there's only one still foreverness moment in all of creation that what higher self is doing is very much like a motion picture like when we had those cartoons uh, those books and we wanted mickey mouse to do this yes and we, we we flip the pages really quickly to see that movement that's what's going on 
And on the occasion, higher self will give you these experiences, whether it's finding that eternal moment and feeling uh, the most excruciating bliss, but feeling no sufferance and then realizing, oh, sufferance is a choice that I'm making. And then that can fast forward your whole process because you can feel all of this terribleness that coming out and it could be I'm not safe and love isn't safe and all of that and you know that you don't have to suffer mm -hmm. that it's a sensation that is not you that is leaving you so that you can be you right right and, and I go ahead and, and it's actually it, it seems like things are going bad because we identify the sensation bad as a problem but no, it's that which is not you that is leaving you. Mm -hmm. it's, so we can decide, oh, this is great. It feels terrible, but I'm going to stay open. I'm not going to close it. It's, I'm going to stay open. I'm going to welcome it all in the love light of my heart. If I want to call an Archangel Michael, he'll come in. If I want to call in St. Germain and Violet Flame me or Mary Magdalene to wrap me in the, violet, in, in the pink flame, maybe the violet flame too, and just... Feel it. Just feel it without judging, without any therefore. Mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. therefore. No therefore, I will do this, or therefore, I won't ever engage this way. No, no therefore. Just feel it. Just feel it. Anything that you need to know on a mental level, if you're feeling it, will come up in your intuition. Absolutely. Yeah. So even if we um, release these beliefs, uh, experiences will still show up. And it's our practice to feel how it feels, to recognize is this um, in resonance or is it not, and not attaching to that bad feeling is what I'm hearing yeah. you say. Yeah, exactly. And, be, and, and also recognizing, oh, great, this is a chance where I'm rewriting my hard disk. All right, bring it on. And not to look at it, in this way of, in the past, this has happened, therefore, this situation is going to equate a future that I don't dig. Mm -hmm. Is to be like, I'm just open. What right. could happen? But maybe if I, an example I'd like to give a lot is like if you're walking in the park and you, you know, slip on a banana peel and, and bump your head on the sidewalk and you crack your head open and then you get brought to this hospital, immediately you crack your head open and you think, oh, what's that, all that red thing? This is bad. <laughs> you say, well, this is bad. And then the, ho the ambulance guys come really quick because everybody's got a phone on them. And you say, oh, well, the ambulance guys came quick and the hospital is actually just down the street, so this is good. Then you get to the hospital and they just, they just welcome, you know, 100 people from a 10-car pileup on the highway and you say, this is bad. And they reroute you to another hospital and you say, well, the hospital is just a couple blocks away. This is pretty good. <laughs> and then you get to that hospital and they have a power failure. So they reroute you and you think that's bad. But they reroute you over the mountain. There's a mountain in Montreal and they reroute you there. And it's in traffic and you think this is bad. But the ambulance guys put a siren on so they think, oh, it's good. We'll cut through traffic. And you get there and the triage thinks broken bone because your skull is broken and they'll send you to orthopedics, which you got to go somewhere else. So they bring you back and you say, well, that's bad. Then you come back <laughs> and you say, well, now you need a blood transfusion. So you think that's bad. And then you get the blood transfusion and who's there on the gurney next to you? It's your soulmate. Right? Yeah. So higher self, just like this ego, 200 feet up, sees all of that. We're always from this place of I'm alone and I have to decide what this is and I have to decide is it good or is it bad because my brain knows I'm separate. So And I feel like I'm not infinitely guided for all of my highest timelines to come in and I cannot surrender so that I'm going to have to judge the situation. But maybe I'm just going to be like, wait a minute, I've gotten this far, three meals a day. <laughs> rent always being paid the entire creation is actually emanating from me as creator incarnate and higher self is okaying every single thing that happens from this place of infinite love wisdom I'm just going to go with it mm -hmm. if the sensation is bad yeah so judgment, withholding judgment is huge, yeah. huge. But but it's like we grow up, that's how we keep ourselves safe 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. How we perceive to keep ourselves safe is judging, Uh oh, that's bad, that's good, stay, go this direction. So then if, you know, we're working in a holographic universe and we're creating everything, um, when are we, or how is it that we can manifest more of what we want versus the struggle? Uh, Like how do we up level and, you know, like, you know, the person that is experiencing a lot of trauma, drama, struggle in the everyday, uh, how do we up level our manifestation to focus on what, more what we want versus what we don't want? Decide that everything that you see, regardless of any a priori thing that you must believe is amazing. Now for a quick break. I'm glad you're enjoying the Awakened Goddess show. I want to remind you the show is community supported. If you found value from watching or listening, I invite you to show your support with a donation. To get details on how you can help, click the link in the show notes or visit theawakengoddess.com forward slash donate. Now back to the show. The entire universe and beyond is rooting for me. If I think that this is bad because of what happened yesterday, then the universe only has this to fit in because I am truly, with every thought, feeling, word, and action, commanding the entire creation in the way that my version of all of creation wants it to be. Even if I don't know it, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. So decide this is good. Because your creation comes from your state, right? So we think about it in the mirror. So if your state, you think this is good, I have, I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know why. That's none of my business. I've got this whole entourage, this entire higher self working for me. And what do I pay you guys for? All I'm going to do is choose my state. Mm-hmm. I'm going to choose to see what I want to see. And I'm going to choose happy. And then... Happy will show up on my screen. And whether it's because I get two scoops of chocolate ice cream or a check comes in the mail or I meet my soulmate or I have a lovely conversation or healing with my father or my mother or something like that, that's what's on the agenda according to higher self. And more that we are in joy, more that we're going to be joy, bliss, freedom, confidence, tranquility, Uh, feeling that the entire creation is for you, feeling in surrender, which opens things up to all the possibilities, more that I'm going to resonate with that frequency that is that of my higher self. And I say higher self, but it's it's higher self here as well. Mm -hmm. Just holographically, we think about higher. It's this way as well. More that I'm going to match that which is infinite. And more possibilities come in, and more that I will, uh, and, and and faster that I'm going to accelerate through my timelines, and less less that I'm going to need those sticky things because I'm not believing that the outside world is happening to me. Mm-hmm. Say, oh, okay, look what I created. It's already done. <laughs> it's already done. Yeah. So it's like so. I mean, think about like so. You can wake up in the morning. When do you wake up at three in the morning? And you go to the bathroom and you stumble out of bed and you stub your little pinky toe on the corner of the bed. You can still, through a place of sovereignty, choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. Because happy is coming from you. And it's tremendous spiritual bodybuilding because, let's face it, it looks like there's something happening to you. And But once you start saying, okay, I know it looks like that. I know it looks like that, and I know the sensation on my pinky toe is a bad <laughs> feeling. That doesn't mean that it's bad. Right. Well, you because know, so- everything is a ripple effect into yes. into the field, which you don't know what's stubbing your toe, that your little pinky, how that ripples and, and shifts the trajectory of your timeline of what happens. Maybe a child in Africa got an extra meal that day because you stubbed your toe. You have no clue. But you can actually decide, oh, how awesome that I stubbed my toe. Look, it's actually even bleeding. A child in Africa is probably getting a second meal today. 
<laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, okay. No it's really just the opportunity. Actually, all things that seem that, that they're bummer, what we're going to classify it in the bummer thing, is actually an opportunity to choose what it is that you want. It's all an opportunity. It's just that we haven't seen ourselves the, the, the nice side of the coin. You haven't seen it. It's like that example with thing. I know my, I'm, I'm falling and breaking my head. I can't get to the hospital. But why don't I just decide that higher self's got it, the entourage has got it, and I'm just going to be as much as in joy and bliss and freedom and in surrender. And I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know why. But I know that mm -hmm. it's going to be good in the end. So I'm just going to come early to the party, basically. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have to see something good happen in order for me to be happy. Even technically, that's victimization. I'm happy because I got a check in the mail. Nothing wrong with that. But still, why should my state be subject to something outside of me, mm -hmm. which is outside of me? But I mean, it's my state that actually shines out and gives me a reason to be happy. You know, it's like when our parents said to us, uh, you know, uh, if you don't stop being upset, I'll give you a reason to be upset. Yes. So start being happy and life will give you a reason to be happy. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what comes to mind is like, you know, take the blinders off. Because if you have the blinders, you can only see that really small, like you already have judged ahead of time what it has to mean. You know, this is what we're talking about. But let's put on the rose-colored glasses where we open up because, as you say, all possibilities are within this holographic universe. And so yeah. how powerful are we that we get to choose our experience? Absolutely. And actually, in choosing our experience, we are telling our story to creation of the infinite possibilities through this perspective I mean, and that's amazing and so that creation will be just as happy if we get all upset for stubbing our toe or be all happy that we don't stub our uh, that, we, that we decide to be in joy and maybe command that a child command we don't have to wish and say oh I was a good boy <laughs> every thought is a command from from creator incarnate commanding it to all of creation and there is nothing that is not possible except for not enoughness, except for lack and limit. So that the story we tell creation can be a very meandering path, and I've taken those, or it can be more of a direct path. And the most direct path is choosing to surrender and to choose your state of being in joy and being in faith. Faith is the heart. So if I have this belief that the entire creation is rooting for me, I'm going to see that unfold in my reality. Yeah. And we have to kind of like brainwash ourselves. So maybe take a month to no matter what that feeling that comes up, whether you're triggered by somebody else or whether you just wake up in the morning with this bad feeling saying, yes, something that is not me is leaving me so that I can really be me. Right. And it works. And no judgment, just feeling it. Just feeling it. Just applying the light of your consciousness in your heart, applying that to that feeling, and then let it continue. And then creation will make ma marigolds and mountains and flowers and monkeys and all of that from that. Yeah. So then we have other people that show up, that we manifest, we bring into our lives, and they cause drama, trauma in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, it, how do we, because that definitely feels like, oh, well, somebody's doing something to me. Right. <laughs> and we get really caught up in this, the situation right? We all, every person has somebody that pushes all their buttons. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's talk about how we address this. I mean, sure, we can 
I mean, so in a, um, say, a verbally abusive situation, do you just stand there and, oh, yeah, that's nice? <laughs> or, like, ha ha I, I would like to walk through, like, something like that where how do we, how do we choose, like, please jump in. <laughs> well, what, what does that have to do with me is the first thing. Mm. What does that have to do with me? What that person has to say? And then, then you're actually in this place where you're not falling out of the eye of the storm and joining that camel that's flying around. <laughs> and you just, or half a barn or whatever is flying in there. And you just, and you can look at it and say, oh, what's that got to do with me? Mm. That person must be in pain. How do I know that they're in pain? Because they're radiating out pain. And if, yeah. a red, if, there's, a, if there's red light in the room, there must be a red light bulb somewhere. <laughs> right. We know that we know that they're we know that they're in pain. And already being in already making those two reminders to yourself, those awarenesses have got nothing to do with me. That person is in pain. Okay, you can know that it's not it's not going to hurt as much, and you can just say your truth. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it's a physical confrontation, then you can also speak your truth through in the physical confrontation uh, confrontation in defending yourself there's nothing wrong with that and you can all and you just say your truth and it's fine because as long as you're staying with what does that have to do with me i know who i am and that person must be in pain it's fine yeah yeah and it's, I... it's, it's listen it's better than yesterday not as good as tomorrow you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. You know, higher self can just snap its fingers and make all of this go away and we're just sitting in this complete bliss of creation never happened in the 13th dimension. But what would be the point of that? Right. Yeah, that, it's like you got to enjoy the journey. Yeah. It's not about the destination. Exactly. So speak your truth. Know that. Your truth is your truth. That person is that person. It's got nothing to do with you. And if it's creating pain, or I don't want to say creating pain because you always have the choice to be in pain or not, but if it's radiating out pain, you know that it is in pain. So poor soul is in pain. And there's decisions that that person can make to be in less pain or say, oh, I must be in pain if I'm radiating all this pain. And just speak your truth. Mm -hmm. when well, integrity yeah and the reminder that you know what is it that they're showing about you what does this have to do with you and then it has nothing to do with you <laughs> exactly and if there's this bad feeling that comes up like if somebody somebody says something and you think oh love isn't safe know that this is not you that the entire creation through this seemingly separate person is inducing for it to come up from your unconscious mind, from your unconscious. I think of the unconscious as everything that's below the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that which sinks to the bottom of the ocean of our being rises up from this agenda, from this infinite wisdom, infinite love wisdom of higher self will create this situation where it comes up and I start feeling, oh, I'm not good enough or love isn't safe, or I'm not chosen, or I'm not special enough. Yay! This is what is not me that is leaving me so that I can really be me. Because if it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't feel like love light, doesn't feel like freedom, doesn't feel like joy, doesn't feel like bliss, doesn't feel like confidence, doesn't feel like creator incarnate ship, it must not be me. Mm -hmm. Because I am, even though my driver's license says Michael Margulis, I am Michael Margulis and all of creation. And I am infinite love light at the base of all of that. So that if it doesn't feel good, it must not be me. And it must be arising through this co-creation in order for me to just feel it. Welcome it all. Welcome it. Don't push it away. Welcome it. Bring it on. Yay. Because this is what is not me that is leaving me so that I can really be me. Mm -hmm. Yay. And I, <laughs> Celebrate. And, and I, 
<laughs> yeah, and I and I and I was growing up. I used to have these three week processes of going through this guilt stuff. And uh, one of my martial art masters said to me, "The goal in life is not to be happy when it's easy to be happy. The goal in life is to be happy when it's not easy to be happy." Mm. And that, so that really helped me. And over the next fifteen years after that, I managed to reduce that time to sometimes it's even just seconds. Whereas it's coming up. I'm so now brainwashed into knowing that if it doesn't feel good, it's not me leaving me so that I can really be me. Yay! <laughs> Let's open up and, and open up those highways. Let myself feel it knowing that it's not me because we think our heart is fragile. Our heart is the only part that knows that we're indestructible and infinite. Mm, yeah. So we feel that. Apply that love. Bring out the violet flame, bring out the, the, the pink flame, wrap myself in the blue flame, Archangel Michael, get over here and help me out, all of that, and let me open to this, and let that, all of that, just continue leaving, and creation can make mountains out of it. Recycle that. Yes. Yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to hold on to that energy. Let it go. Exactly. And being happy, even when it doesn't feel good, it's going to increase and higher self will come through more because you will be resonant with it. So the problem is that because we have this sensation, we believe, oh, this is me. Mm. But if we remember, oh, this is not me, that's leaving me so that I can really be me. We start getting excited about the project. And even though I haven't seen it in the external context that this is good i'm sovereign i'm going to choose to be happy just the same and i don't know how when or when and why but i know this is going to be good by yourself let's go yeah Make it happen. bring it on <laughs> i'm just, I'm just going to be happy i'm paying you guys to do all this stuff i'm just going to be happy and follow the synchronicities that's it picking up breadcrumb tray joy 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 happy bliss excitement Enthusiasm is in Theos, in God. Nice. Yeah. So you have uh, an experience uh, that you want to walk us through. So yeah, I would love I to do. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love to as well. I always love to um, uh, make sure we embody and have a, a feeling of, of a practice so we can not just intellectualized, but we really feel it. So, yeah, Absolutely. I'm excited. All right. So, everybody get comfy and begin breathing rhythmically. So, by rhythmically, I mean the same length of time on the inhale and the exhale. Let it feel natural. Just allowing the uniqueness of your breath signature to express itself. And now validate yourself as pure consciousness. Validate yourself as creator incarnate. Know that you can do anything. Now, in your imagination, bring yourself to this place in nature that you find to be most beautiful. It could be any kind of nature. So long as you feel safe and you feel this place is utterly beautiful. Now, feel the gratitude that you feel for being in this place of nature. If there's any birds, listen to their song. If there's any other animals, listen to their sound. If there's any flowers, smell the fragrance of the flowers. If there's any water, enjoy it. And now feel the earth cradling you. And feel how safe this feels. And feel grateful. Feel joy. Smile. And now feel the warmth of the sunshine shining you, shining upon you and warming you just perfectly. 
And now let your heart open and feel love and gratitude for this place in this moment. Let your heart swell and swell with gratitude. Feel this love in your heart. Feel this love right in your heart and let your heart swell and swell with gratitude, joy, and love. And now place your attention on all of nature all over our precious planet. Feel the divine perfection and feel the beauty and feel the love completely interwoven all over nature and feel love and gratitude for this place, allowing your heart to open even more and swell with love and gratitude. And now place your attention on the spirit of the earth, on Gaia herself. And feel love in your heart for Gaia, knowing that she has given you everything you have, even your body. Let your heart swell and swell with love, knowing that your divine mother, Gaia, Mother Earth, has loved you forever and she will always love you, and that you are her divine child. Feel that love and that gratitude in your heart, and let your heart swell with gratitude and love. And now place this love in a white sphere, and with your intention, decide that this white sphere go all the way to the heart of the earth, where you and your Divine Mother create a heart-to-heart -heart love connection and sit in utter openness and surrender to your Divine Mother's love that ushers into your body. Let your Divine Mother's love fill your heart. Let it expand and extend and flow into the rest of your body, into all of your organs and tissues and cells. And let it flow past your physical body, into all of your light bodies, into all that you are. And now deciding that this connection remains. Place your attention on the night sky See the moon, the constellations, the myriad of stars streaming through the Milky Way. Know that all of this is your Divine Father, Father Sky, Great Spirit. Open your heart and feel love for your Divine Father. And feel gratitude knowing that He has given you everything that you have even the spirit that animates your body and that he has loved you forever and he will always love you and he has even created this entire universe just for you to experience it let your heart swell and swell and swell with love for your divine father and now place this love in a white sphere and just deciding as Creator Incarnate, send this love to the heart of the sun, where you once again create a heart-to-heart -heart love connection with your Divine Father. And sitting in this openness, allow your Divine Father's love to pour into your body, filling up, a, filling up your heart, flowing into the rest of your body, into all of your organs, tissues, all the way to the subatomic level, letting the, your Father's love extend past your physical body, into all of your light bodies, into all that you are. And now sitting and feeling into this unconditional love of your Divine Mother, Gaia, and your Divine Father, Great Spirit. Feel love for yourself in your own heart. Let your heart swell with love for yourself. 
knowing that you are created in the image of the divine and that you are infinitely loved by all of creation. Let your heart swell with love for yourself and gratitude, knowing that at the base of you, you are infinite love light. Smile and becoming enthused. Feel gratitude and joy and love yourself, knowing that you are the divine product of all of creation. Knowing that you are creator and creation all at once. Feel love for your heart. Feel love in your heart, for your heart, for all that you are. And now, just decide that you will inhale and exhale from above and below having your inhale meet in your heart, be stamped by that energetic signature of love and let it extend into the rest of creation upon exhale. Inhale from above and below meeting in your heart and exhale into all of creation. And know that you are loving your creation. Feel your heart expanded. And just decide that this unity consciousness, this love consciousness, this inhaling from above and below, extending into all of creation, will just continue, even if you forget. And when it feels complete to you, you can open your eyes, knowing that regardless of the situation, you are showing up. That was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. I mean, we're loving our creation with every thought. Yeah. Every word, every action. Our creation, not someone separate. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I love that breathing, meeting at the heart, and I could feel that toroidal feel just like whoosh, radiate out. So how awesome. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, Michael, I wish we had like more time to talk. This is such a beautiful conversation that, uh, you know, it just feels like moments ago when I was saying, gosh, I, you know, I don't know where we're going to go. But uh, wow, I mean, this conversation was magical and powerful, potent. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for your contribution to all of creation. Thank you. Let this be a blessing in our lives and in the lives of everybody who we touch and everybody who they touch. Yes. And let it radiate out. Yeah. Into all of creation and beyond. Yeah. Whatever that is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Awakened Goddess Show. I hope you enjoyed today's guest and got something you can start using in your life right away. For more spiritual insights and to listen to more episodes, subscribe to The Awakened Goddess Show at theawakenedgoddess.com and discover wisdom that'll change your life. 